How's it going everybody? It's your old pal Baba Ganesh here. Welcome back. I hope you're all having a good one here today. So I'm really excited to do this video for you here today. Uh, I'm actually going to be going backpacking for a few days and so I thought it would be a great time uh, to go over my equipment, uh, talk about some of the changes, and give you all an updated 2020 ultralight gear setup. Let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, everybody, and as always, be sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already to keep up to date with all my videos. I got new ones coming out every single Wednesday and Sunday for you. And of course, at the end of the video, be sure to give me a thumbs up if you did enjoy yourself. I always do appreciate it. So, now I haven't done a video like this for quite some time. The last time I actually did a video uh, going over my entire gear setup was actually for my 2018 Appalachian Trail through hike. If you would like to take a look at that gear setup, you can take a look at the card right up top there for you. But, but, don't do it just yet. Hold off to the end of the video. In the meantime, we're going to go over my new 2020 gear setup, and I'm excited to talk about that with you here today. Okay, so the first piece of gear that I'd like to talk about today is going to be my Light AF Fanny Pack. This little guy right here. So this is made out of the DCF Cuban Fiber Dyneema. Uh, so fully waterproof, nice YKK uh, tape zipper up top, so waterproof zipper. This thing is just as the brand says, light AF, this thing is super light. So now this allows me to carry things like my GoPro. This is just the little tripod that I bring with me. I'm filming with my GoPro right now. But yes, my tripod and my GoPro mounted can fit inside this little fanny pack. Oftentimes, I'll even put my uh, Sony A6000 camera in here, and up front, a nice little mesh pocket to put my cell phone, who knows, maybe even some snacks. You never know what's going to be in here. It's a fanny pack. I love this piece of gear. On to the next one. Okay, and my backpack of choice, this is going to be the Granite Gear Crown 60. Uh, if you would like to take a look at an independent review of this, I do have one for you. Card right up top there. This pack has treated me really, really well. It's nice and lightweight. I've been thoroughly, thoroughly happy with it for not only my winter trips with supporting a little bit more weight, but lightweight enough to where carrying my summer gear, this completes a really great ultralight system for me. Okay, so before I go ahead and dive into some of the things that I have on the exterior here, let me flip it around and go over some of these small things that I keep in my hip belt pocket and some of the utility things that I have in here. So, opening this little guy up right here. There we go. Uh, we're gonna keep things in here like my chapstick. This is important. I start to panic if I don't have it. Uh, we're also going to keep my safety whistle. Ooh, what else do we have in here? Ah, we're also going to have my uh, Leatherman Squirt PS4 multi-tool. Uh, got the pliers, got the scissors on there. Something nice and lightweight, something nice and simple. Can't go wrong with uh, that little guy right there. And last but not least, this is something that is absolutely essential for my backpacking system. It is my little totem, a uh, little mouse droid. Uh, this thing is super cool. It's super stupid, but I always have it with me. It's a little good luck charm. Gotta love it. Coming to the side of the backpack right here, this is going to be, these are going to be my Lecky Cristallo trekking poles. Uh, just something nice and simple. I'm a big fan of Lecky in particular. They really, really took care of me along my Appalachian Trail through hike when uh, one of the locks decided to just break on me. Um, so, Lecky, thank you all so much. You have a fan for life. Uh, and so, I had to come back home and get a new set of Lecky Cristallo trekking poles because mine were kind of gross. So Lecky Cristallo, definitely the brand in particular, I recommend to take a look at them. Lifetime warranty, great customer service. So okay, now now we can officially move on to the front. Now usually in the other hip belt pocket, I'll just keep my snacks and things like that. I don't have any snacks in there. I ate them all, sort of. Uh, don't worry, I'll refill it for my backpacking trip. But anyway, let's move on to the exterior of the backpack here. Uh, so right here on the outside, this is going to be my long-handled spoon by Sea to Summit. 
I just keep it on one of the loops on the outside here so it doesn't poke anything inside my backpack. Yeah, nice lightweight, can't go wrong, and it's the long, long handle style, uh, specifically so uh, some of the backpacker meals, you're not scraping your knuckles uh, and getting them coated up with food and stuff like that. Certainly if you want to lick your fingers and lick your knuckles afterwards, be my guest, but with hiking through the dirt all day, eh, it's nice having a long spoon. On to the next one. Alright, so, big mesh pocket up front here. I always keep quite a few things, things that I need to grab throughout the day so I don't have to go digging into my backpack. And of course, one of the most important pieces of gear that you're going to carry in your backpacking set is going to be a good water filter system. So this is my Sawyer Squeeze. Uh, really, really like it. I carried one for pretty much my entire Appalachian Trail through hike. And when I came back, again, I just had to get myself another one. It's Sawyer. They're tried and true. Nice and small, nice and simple, but incredibly effective. This is something brand new to my backpack. Uh, like a lot of you, I finally got sick and tired of those Sawyer Squeeze bags or some of the platypus bags just eventually just bursting on me or leaking and especially when you have to filter water it can get quite annoying after a little while especially when you've gone through the amount of bags that I've gone through so this is something new I'm excited to try this out I've heard nothing but great things from other hikers this is my knock outdoors uh, squeeze bag water bag it's a wide mouth oh, fills in from the top up here you got your nozzle down here to screw onto the filter and you just kind of roll it over and squeeze all the water out and filter it all. Uh, that's super, super durable material, super tough material. Um, and again, from other hikers, other through hikers in particular, they all swear by this. It's also great to have, you know, added water storage if I have to haul water uh, into camp and things. Um, yeah, definitely looking forward to trying this out. I haven't had the opportunity just yet. I'll let you know how it works. Next piece of gear that I keep in the outside pocket right here, this is going to be uh, my Petzl Tika headlamp. Uh, I'll rotate this anywhere from the outside. If it's not raining, I'll put it in my light AF waterproof fanny pack if it is raining, just to keep it on me. I really like this lamp. What I love about it in particular is the simplicity of the button clicks. But I'm not going to get too detailed into it. I do have an independent review of this as well. If you would like to take a look at it, go ahead and click right up there. So Petzl Tika headlamp, definitely another essential piece that you should always have in your backpacking setup. Okay, I'm just going to reach in blind. Let's see, let's see what I'm going to pull out here. Let's see what I got. Oh, look what we got. So this is the uh, Osprey uh, rain cover, uh, pack cover for my backpack. This is still the original one that I've had for quite a few years now. I had this on my Appalachian, Appalachian Trail through hike, um, and it fit my uh, Osprey Exos 48 liter perfectly. As you can see, my backpack here, even though the volume capacity is 60 liters, I really don't utilize all the 60 liters, so it's small enough, it's compact enough, and hey, it still works great. Had to patch up a few holes, of course, but hey, you got to maintain your gear. Let's see what else we got in here. This is exciting. I don't know what I'm going to pull out. Okay, we got some more stuff. Uh, so here I just have a simple microfiber towel. Uh, this one is for me personally. Blue is for Bob. Uh, microfiber towel just from REI. You know, just to keep myself nice and clean. Wipe the sweat off my face. Wash up at the end of the day. That sort of thing. Uh, this is just a simple REI bandana. This is my handkerchief, my snot rag. Um... Yep, don't need to say anything more about that. Handkerchief, it's not rag. There you go. Okay, let's see what else we got here. Hold on. Okay, we got something else. Uh, in my right hand here, this is going to be my bear string setup. You're probably asking yourself, why is it in this little stuff sack? Well, the stuff sack is actually attached to the end of the bear string to where I can drop little pebbles into it to weight it down and hurl it over a tree. Uh, so my bear string, 30. 30 feet of zingit line. Again, came on my Appalachian Trail through hike. It's still in my backpack. And as part of Leave No Trace to go along with the bear string, of course, you want to make sure you have yourself a really, really great trowel. Uh, this is the Deuce of Spades. It is a 0.6 ounce trowel. Really nice and lightweight. All you got to do is scoop out your dirt, do your stuff. 
but I definitely recommend picking this one up. Make sure you practice your leave no trace principles. 0.6 ounces, gotta have it. Okay, so I only have a couple more things in here. Now I'm all the way down at the bottom of this already. So first thing that I pulled out here, uh, this is my rain jacket. This is the Outdoor Research Helium Rain Jacket. Uh, I do have another independent review of this one in particular. Go ahead, right up top there. Uh, but yeah, Outdoor Research Helium Rain Jacket, incredibly lightweight. You can see how it packs down into this tiny little pouch, built-in pocket kind of thing. Uh, yeah, has definitely kept me dry in some pretty, pretty brutal weather. Gotta love it. And last but not least, to complete the outside pocket here, these are the Outdoor Research helium rain pants same concept super nice and lightweight fit into their own little pocket back pocket on the pants in particular packs down nice and small yeah can't say enough about it gotta have the rain gear and the fact that the helium rain gear itself is so light really doesn't weigh me down all that much uh, but again they've done it well and they've done well by me keeping it dry um, yeah on to the next stuff Okay, and to finish off the exterior of the backpack, an essential piece of equipment that has to be with me on every single backpacking trip. Just can't do it without it, folks. Can't do it without it. This is the Thermarest Z seat. The seating device, as it's called. Just a simple foam pad. It's a sit pad. It's a butt pad. Um, not much more I can say about it. It's only two ounces. This thing I've had for probably about three or four years now, it has taken a beating and is still going strong. Just to give you an idea of how good an investment this, this is, it's insulated, keeps your butt nice and warm, keeps your butt dry, you can fan the fire with it so you don't have to stick your face in the hot fire. Um, yeah, good stuff, good stuff. Definitely as a hiker, I recommend getting this. It's so convenient just being able to put it down and have a dry, warm spot to sit on, especially if it's cold, it's raining. No one likes to sit on a cold, wet log or wet rock or something like that. Good piece of gear. Okay, so now to the good stuff, down to the nitty gritty. It's time to open this thing up and see what's inside. Okay, and the first thing that I'm gonna carry here up on top of all my gear, this is going to be my food bag. Uh, so inside of here, not only do I have uh, about two days, two, two and a half days worth of food, but I also have my cook pot in here, the MSR Titanium Kettle. Uh, again, if you want to take a look at the review that I have of my complete ultralight cooking system, you can take a look right up top there. Uh, I really go into detail what it's all about, uh, what I really like about it and things, and how it's worked well for me. Uh, but this is two, two and a half days worth of food, and also my cook pot. Um, yeah, can't go wrong. I keep that right at the top of my backpack, because uh, you never know when I'm going to get hungry. I'm a hiker. Hiker hunger's real. You gotta eat. On to the next one. Okay, so now let's see what I got in here. Ooh, ooh, I got something. I got something. Oh, so this... This I'm really excited to talk about. I haven't done a review on this just yet. This is a fairly new piece of gear. Uh, something I'm very, very excited about, as you can see by the big smile on my face. Uh, this is my brand new tent. This is the Mountain Laurel Designs Duo Mid Tarp with the single inner net. So it is a two-person tent, technically, but it has only the one-person inner net. So it's cool where you can kind of customize it to your liking. Again, I haven't done an independent review on this just yet. I've only taken it on maybe two or three backpacking trips, so I'm still kind of working with it a little bit and kind of setting it up in a way that works well for me while I'm hiking. Um, but really excited to share this with you guys eventually. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. This thing is really cool. And as you can see, it compresses down pretty nice and small. It's basically like the size of a football. Um, and I put everything into compression sacks so I can really cinch things down if I have to. But I'm excited about this tent, but it's time to pull out something else from the backpack. Alright, so, what else have we got in here? Oh, oh, here we go. So, this is my electronics case. Huh, it's in the backpack there somewhere. So, electronics case, all I'm going to carry is a RAV Power 10,000 milliamp battery pack. Uh, I have a splicer cable here that has three different head attachments on it, which is nice. So it eliminates having to bring multiple cables. Uh, got a set of headphones in there because you got to bring your headphones. And that's pretty much about it. 
It's in uh, one of these op sacks, so it's a nice heavy, heavy duty Ziploc. So it's really nice and waterproof. Uh, it's And the bag itself is large enough to where if I have to put my cell phone in there, um, or even my GoPro if I really, really have to, it can fit. Um, yeah, this is really just my electronics that I bring. Besides my camera and my cell phone, I like to keep it nice and simple. Okay, what's next? What's next that we got here? Ah, my toiletry kit. The all-important toiletry kit. So now this is, this case that I have here, this is actually intended for bike tools. So this is like the Osprey bike tool little case, but I like the way it kind of unfolds. Uh, you have all your compartments for all your gear. You can hear rattling around. That's vitamin I right there. Uh, but little compartments for my travel toothpaste. Uh, some Neosporin is in there. My first aid kit, uh, extra batteries, a little holster for my toothbrush, which is cool so it kind of gets the air and dries out. Um, yeah, this thing's kind of neat. I like the way it just kind of unfolds. It folds up together. It has a, a little tiny shock cord that pulls over the top and keeps it all cinched. You can see it keeps it nice and small, nice and simple, nice and lightweight. Uh, it does have two little loops up top here as well so I can actually hook it inside my tent if I so choose I'm never going to really but it's just cool the fact that it has it again it's the Osprey like bike tool kit uh, bike tool bag um, yeah I thought it would be a great little thing for a toiletry kit and thus far I kind of like it how nice and small it is and all the compartments it's done pretty well okay so down to the last few things that I carry uh, obviously, I don't really carry all that much. It's an ultralight system. It's nice to be nice and simple. But I still like to be comfortable. And that's where a couple of the next pieces of gear are going to come in for that. So the first one I want to talk about, this is, ooh, my Nemo Philo Elite Pillow. You inflate this thing so you do blow it up. Um, I really like camp pillows, I'm not going to lie. I've done the clothes in the stuff sack. And especially during summer where I'm really not bringing any clothes. I don't like having my head, you know, ending up like this uh, after just a couple hours of sleeping. So it's, I love having a pillow. This thing is super nice and lightweight, super nice and simple. I, it does come with a built-in stuff sack, but who has the time to put it back in the stuff sack? Come on now, I got, I got some hiking to do. Uh, but yeah, definitely recommend picking yourself up a camp pillow. It's going to change the way you sleep in the backcountry. And as we all know, you got to get your rest. A good night's sleep goes a long, 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 long way. All right, on to the next one. Okay, now this one, I'm really excited to talk about this one. I have done an independent review on this one, a really thorough review, which I'm very happy about. This is my sleeping pad of choice, the Seat to Summit Etherlite XT. This thing is great. It weighs just under a pound. As you can see, I don't put it in the stuff sack. I kind of roll it up and flatten it out so it just squeezes on top and sandwiches up on top of everything. And as well, I can just unroll it, inflate it, and be done with it. I don't have to worry about rolling it back up and squeezing it back into a small stuff sack in the morning. It's annoying. So, Sea to Summit Etherlite XT. Again, I have a great independent review on this one here. You can take a look at that right up in the corner. Definitely, definitely check it out. If you want to get a good night's sleep in the backcountry, this is the bad boy right here. Okay, what else do we got? Huh, huh, how could I possibly forget? You got to get your TP there. You got to get your TP. You got your Purell, Purell bottle in there as well. Keep it all together. Not much more I can say about that, but you, you, uh, you kind of need this. Yeah, you kind of need to bring this. Bring it. Okay, and ooh, this is what we got. So this right here, this is the stuff sack slash pump sack that is intended for my sleeping pad. Now, you're probably wondering why I still bring the stuff sack if I don't even use it for the sleeping pad. Well, actually, inside here, this is where I keep my sleeping bag liner. This is the Cocoon Silk Liner. It's only about four ounces. It's nice and lightweight. But it does a couple things for me. It, one, adds about five degrees of temperature to my sleeping bag. But more importantly, it keeps my sleeping bag clean. So it's a down sleeping bag. I don't want to wash it very often. You're not supposed to be washing down products very often in particular. So this keeps my sleeping bag clean where I can wash my liner on a regular basis. Make it smell nice and good. Um, and again, it just adds just a little bit of temperature value, a little bit more comfort inside my sleeping bag. 
And as well, with the stuff sack, it is the pump sack to inflate the pad itself. So it's nice where I can still have a use for it. Um, so, so the reason that I use this is one that I can bring it with me. Plus as well, for ease of use, the stuff sack that came with the Cocoon liner is really small. Uh, so you really have to like cram it in there. And again, the last thing I want in the morning is to be struggling to put my gear back together. I want to be able to grab it, put it back in the stuff sack, cinch it down, be done with it, and throw it in my backpack. Okay, so now on to the last thing that is inside my backpack. I know, I haven't really pulled out a whole lot here. It's an ultralight system. Get with it. Ah, this is going to be my sleeping bag of choice, the Seat to Summit SP Spark 2. I know it's a tongue twister. It's a 35 degree ultralight down bag that weighs only 16 ounces. Inside here, I also keep my hiking clothes. So when it comes to my hiking clothes, especially for summer, I keep it really nice and simple. Really the majority of this is just camp clothes. Uh, the items that I'm gonna be carrying as my extra clothing is going to be uh, one extra pair of hiking socks, one pair of liner socks for at camp, Last, and then of course I bring my sleeping clothes. That's going to consist of my Smartwool Ultralight uh, pant base layers, they're the 150 gram base layers, so really nice and light. And then I have the Patagonia Ultralight Capoline Top, really nice and silky smooth, so it's really good next to skin. This is my Fleece Beanie by Mountain Hardware. This weighs only one ounce. It's great to bring with me, even during the summer months, the warm months. Again, it gets chilly at night. So it's great to have just that little lightweight cap to help keep your body temperature up. Double it up with my nice Patagonia Nano Airlight Hybrid sitting right here. Uh, this is a good, nice lightweight system that keeps me warm, especially during the summer. Okay, and so last but not least uh, are going to be the things that I wear during the day, the clothes that I hike in. Uh, I like to keep it nice and light, nice and simple, nice and breathable. Uh, so starting off, these are the Brooks, uh, pair of Brooks running shorts. These have the liners built into them. They're really nice and breathable, really nice and lightweight. I'm a big, big fan of running shorts. These are the six inch model. Uh, so nice and lightweight, nice and breathable. Uh, keep me moving, that's for sure. Uh, this guy right here, this is just an outdoor research uh, quick dry t-shirt, synthetic quick dry t-shirt. This thing is super, super lightweight, really, really breathable. I actually had this shirt on my Appalachian Trail through hike. It took quite a few washes, adding a little bit of white vinegar to finally kill some of the smell. One of my other t-shirts unfortunately didn't make it. Uh, but this is just a really breathable, really, really lightweight shirt. Again, I just like to keep it simple. When it comes to keeping the sun off my head and the sweat off my face, uh, this is just a nice simple buff. Going on this trip, this will be doubling up as a nice little face mask for me uh, for social distancing purposes. Uh, but I can use this in so many different ways. Definitely if you're going to start getting into hiking and backpacking, I absolutely recommend picking up probably a couple buffs. You can use them as headbands. Uh, sweatbands, you can use them as a neck gaiter, a face mask, balaclava. There's just so many different uses for these. Very moisture wicking, fast drying, easy to wash as well. I've had this for a few years and it went from Georgia to Maine on my Appalachian Trail through hike. Probably one of the more important things that you're going to be choosing as far as gear is going to be your footwear. Now that consists of your hiking shoes as well as your socks. My personal sock of choice is Darn Tough. Darn Tough hiking socks. You can go with the crew length, you can go with the quarter length, doesn't make a difference. But you get yourself a good pair of Darn Tough hiking socks. They're tough. They're darn tough. And what I like about them too is they have a lifetime warranty. So if you wear them out, especially if you do a lot of long distance hiking, you will wear them out. It's great to wear that company will stand by them. You can ship your old stuff back in and they'll send you a brand new pair. Uh, yes, I did that for my through hike. Don't worry. I washed those socks first before I sent them back. But I sent back four different pairs. A few weeks later, I got four new pairs in the mail. Darn tough. Get them while they're hot. Now, this is a cool piece of gear right here. These are what's called gaiters. This brand in particular, these are Dirty Girl Gaiters. 
what these are intended for, they're a sleeve that go over your shoe, uh, go over your ankle. This really helps keep a lot, keep a lot of the, uh, the dust, the dirt, the debris uh, out of your shoes. We've all dealt with getting little pebbles and little pieces of debris down into our shoes. It can tear your sock apart, it can tear your feet apart, and they're just flat out annoying. Uh, they are not waterproof. They do dry very quickly, but the most important thing is just keeping all that gunk out of your shoes, plain and simple. Dirty Girl Gators, definitely get yourself a set. And my footwear of choice, I did do a review on these shoes in particular, the Ultra Lone Peak. These, This is the Ultra Lone Peak 4 in particular, there is the 4.5 out right now, but I bought a couple of these at REI's garage sales, and so I have a couple pairs ready to go. I'm a big fan of Ultra, that toe shape, that uh, foot shaped toe box that you get there. Um, nice and lightweight, nice and breathable. This is the non waterproof version. Come on now. <laughs> I'm not going to go waterproof. Crazy. Um, but really happy with these shoes. Honestly, I don't wear anything else besides Ultra anymore. Even my day to day walking shoes, running shoes around home, all that good stuff is all Ultra. I love them. Can't say enough about them. Take a look at them. They've done well by me. So, okay, everybody, that is it. That is my entire gear setup. I don't have a lot of stuff. This is a great ultralight system uh, that keeps my weight down, still provides me with some nice comfort items, but it touches all the bases on some of the essentials that you need to bring with you while hiking. Um, this stuff has really, really done well for me. I have some new pieces of gear that I'm excited to do a review about as well and get back to you on those things. Um, but this is my gear for 2020, my ultralight 2020 setup. In the meantime, I want to thank you all so much for joining me here today. I hope you're all staying safe, happy, and healthy while you're at home during these tough times. If you guys haven't already, I'd love it if you would subscribe down below. Make sure you keep up to date with all my videos. Always appreciate it if you would give me a thumbs up as well. Certainly if you have any questions whatsoever about my gear, be sure to leave me a question down in the comments. Hope to catch you on the next video. Thank you all so, so much. Have a great one. Baba Ganoush, out.